Hello, welcome to a video interview, uh, a new content stream that we're running here on Lawyers Weekly. I've got uh, Ma Michael Bacina, um, a partner at Piper Alderman, and also Stephen Pettigrove, um, special counsel at Piper Alderman. And we're going to be talking about some of the latest regulatory updates uh, in the non-fungible token space uh, and what all of these updates mean. Uh, Stephen, there's a lot to talk about uh, in this conversation we're having, so let's dive right in. Uh, can you outline what some of the latest regulatory updates for NFTs are? Sure. Thanks, Jerome. There's a lot going on globally. I think to take perhaps the local perspective first, um, many listeners will be aware that uh, there was a consultation conducted by Treasury earlier this year on digital assets and in particular looking at setting up a bespoke licensing regime for what they term crypto asset secondary service providers or CASPers. Um, one key question under that uh, consultation is what the scope be in terms of capturing different types of digital assets and a key question which there was quite a lot of divided opinion in the responses that i've seen was whether or not nfts should be included in the definition of a digital asset for the purposes of of that new regime so um, we haven't yet seen the results of that consultation the government's obviously digesting that and we've got a new government as well who'll take some time to get the wrap their head around what those responses um, will be and how to formulate uh, a regime regime and what that regime would look like but certainly one of the issues we're looking at is whether or not NFTs will be within scope for whatever proposals the Treasury decide to come back with. Um, another aspect as well, just looking down the pipe to consider is there's um, intended to be a token mapping exercise conducted in the second half of this year. And that will again be looking at different types of digital assets and how they might fit within uh, the regulatory regime. And we expect that NFTs will be in scope for that one as well. And that will also feed into the, the general um, crypto asset uh, regulatory reform work stream that Treasury has been working on. Um, to step back, I can also give you a few points on the global perspective as well, Dave. Yeah, yeah, please, might, might be good context. Sure, yeah, so there's a lot going on globally. From a European perspective, one of the big developments in the last couple of months has been um, the deal that was struck in the EU over the market in crypto assets regulation, um, which is intended to be a pretty comprehensive regime uh, Europe wide for digital assets. Um, the European Commission and, and the um, a number of European countries have agreed basically to carve out NFTs from that regime for the moment, which is which is good news. But they've pushed that into another work stream basically to look at NFTs as its own standalone issue over the next 18 months and to come back and determine whether or not um, appropriate regulation is needed around uh, NFTs and also thinking about whether or not they need to be covered by what's called the transfer of funds regulation, which is a money laundering regulation in the EU. Just skip across to the US side. Um, the SEC, as, as many will know, has been very active in the digital assets space. Um, and they are also looking at NFTs as well, in, and particularly concerned about uh, if NFTs that come with a revenue stream of some sort, or NFTs which um, have fractionalized ownership. Um, and they're looking at the securities aspects of those and so why, why are these up, up, updates in Australia so significant? You know, what, why is this uh, so necessary and important as we move forward post-pandemic? Well, this is something that's been in the pipeline for a while in the cryptocurrency space. And I think NFTs are shouldering into it or elbowing into it because they've grown so dramatically in the last year. Uh, so it's quite a dramatic increase in market size, but also you're seeing a lot of uh, very large profile companies moving into the space. I mean, just last week, Tiffany's announced they were doing NF TIFFs. Uh, so when you see these big brands coming in, it's not just uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's the AFL, it's Cricket Australia and um, a number of other parties that are moving in and you know, NBA top shots and, and really big profile people coming in. So that's got a lot of attention, a lot of money into the space. And so what do lawyers need to know moving forward from all of these regulatory updates? You were just outlining a number of big uh, companies in Australia or organisations in Australia that are getting into this space. Uh, and so they obviously need to be reacting to what's happening around them. But proactively, uh, you know, what else do they need to know moving forward? Well, I think in relation to NFTs from the lawyer's side, they need to understand that most crypto thought has come out of the fintech and financial services space. But NFTs really have come out of copyright licensing arts law, if you will. So it's quite different for those lawyers who had come from that traditional financial services side of things to be dealing with um, matters which really fit more into licensing and IP. So that's probably the biggest point of difference. And then there's the interesting crossover as to where some NFTs might become um, a financial product or when things which are classically just royalty streams and more intellectual property 
um, associated features are suddenly being able to be sliced up in a way which is more akin to financial markets. So there's an interesting collision there, but it's definitely part of this you know, broader range um, of legal issues that come up with digital assets. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds as though it's a pretty rapidly uh, changing and expanding field. Um, so what, oh, sorry. So how is legal practice evolving in this space as a result? Um, you, know, you were just outlining some of the things that lawyers need to know, but um, you, know, you guys work in this area day to day. Um, you know, how is your uh, practice uh, changing uh, from what it might have been even just a few years ago? One thing we're seeing, Jerome, is a wider array of use cases potentially for NFTs. Now, classically, many people will be familiar with the sort of JPEG images that you can trade. Uh, online as NFTs, but we're also seeing them increasingly moving into other applications, including the financial services space. So an, a really interesting example of that is the V3 of the Uniswap protocol, which some will be familiar with, which is a decentralized exchange on the Ethereum blockchain. Now they're using NFTs to represent liquidity positions in that, um, in that exchange. So if you've deposited liquidity into the exchange, you'll get an NFT representation of that that you can potentially trade. Now that's a really interesting use case and throws up some really interesting financial services questions as well. So as we see that expansion of different use cases, we're seeing a lot of regulatory complexity. So there's a need for lawyers both to understand the underlying technology, but also to really um, wrap their head around the potential regulatory, indicate, re regulatory implications of some quite novel um, uses of the technology. Just, just a follow-up point there, you're talking about the importance of understanding the technology, but from my sort of outsider perspective, and you know, I'll preface this by noting that I have very little appreciation for how these things work, uh, to what extent can lawyers uh, actually truly understand you know, the evolving technologies since so many of them appear to be very new um, and, and unprecedented in their own ways? For my part, the best thing to do is to jump on some of these platforms and have a play around. That's the easiest way to to, to wrap your head around and buy an NFT or you know participate in one of these DeFi protocols. That's not always easy, but um, it's a it's a learning it's a learning thing, and you know take a step by step. Absolutely, and, and and so what might the future hold in this space? You know, obviously, um, you know the sky's the limit. Uh, you know, with developments like these, but but how you can and will legal practice evolve as a result? Um, you know, both proactively and reactively. Oh, I'll take this one. I think that we're seeing the birthplace in NFTs of a brand new product, and so there's a whole lot of different product market fit. Just like the just like blockchain is like the internet again. Um, to build on Stephen's prior point. People understood the internet by getting on and using it, not sitting around and theorizing it as much, at least understanding it before they could dive in. And the internet threw up new products and services, which uh, gave fantastic results for consumers and business to business. And diff challenges in contracting and making agreements digitally, many of these similar themes come up in blockchain, but a fundamental point is understanding the underlying technology because the quirks that arise in the space tend to come out of the technology. We're seeing a jump in M&A activity. We just advised on uh, acquisition of a local Australian NFT development uh, business by a listed Canadian company. We've seen significant funds being established by businesses such as the Australian founded Immutable um, and their partner foundation overseas to help promote the ongoing development of video games using NFTs uh, out there. So even GameSpot coming out, um, sorry, GameStop coming out and launching an NFT marketplace and Coinbase had an NFT marketplace. There's a huge boost in that space. So there's this Cambrian explosion of new products that comes with challenges left, right, and center when there's all sorts of new products. And really, as you say, the sky is the limit. We've seen, we see NFT ticket stubs coming out from ticket, ticketing issuers. So like the internet, it's really gonna get behind a whole lot of different business models and products being delivered. And that means a whole lot of modification of contracts and understanding products. The only way to really, for, law, for lawyers to service their clients well then is to understand the tech figure out what the differences are and how it changes the business models and really understand what their clients are trying to do so that they can ensure that the deals line up. We might not be at a point where we can push smart contracts all the way through to reduce or eliminate the involvement in lawyer, of lawyers in many of those deals. We might get there one day, but helping understand the client's businesses is still a classic point that lawyers have always needed to do. It's just here, there's an extra layer of technology on top that makes it additionally challenging. Absolutely. Um, and, and just finally, you know, I appreciate that you both uh, might be a little biased on this question, but, you know, in the wake of all of these regulatory and legislative updates and obviously all the technological advancements, do you see this space as being perhaps the most exciting area of legal practice as we move forward uh, into the new normal? 
Look, it certainly is for me, but I, I've been in this space for almost seven years and have really fell in love with the energy um, of all the new products that are coming out and all the amazing new ways of doing business. Um, but you are right, it, it's, it's obviously a biased position. There's plenty of traditional legal practice that's not going to be disrupted for some time. But I think over, over the next you know, five to 20 years, a whole lot of things are gonna shift under everyone's feet. Um, and it'll, it'll simply be the ongoing change of disruption that we saw from the internet, but now in a whole new way and perhaps a, perhaps a bit faster in some ways. Stephen, is that your view as well? Yeah, absolutely. It's a super exciting area. And I think it poses a lot of challenges as well in terms of um, new applications of, of traditional concepts, but also needing to rethink their thinking in particular ways. So certainly for me, that keeps me on my toes and I, I very much enjoy working in the space. Oh, well, I really appreciate you both joining me to have this snapshot conversation of uh, the latest updates in the NFT space. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jerome.